Hello Kaylee and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a tutorial for a wide leg palazzo trouser that has this really cool like front pleat, front fold, front wrap detail. I don't know the, the specific name to call it but basically it's a detail that kind of wraps around the front like you have a skirt over the trouser. This I found on Pinterest and I knew I wanted to try it out for myself. So I've made mine in Ankara. It's this really cool yellow and black print but you can do this with any woven fabric of your choice. I ended up working with about two meters of fabric for this design in terms of fabric use and I made the patterns working from my basic trouser block. So if you'd like to see how I created this piece and make sure to keep on watching. At this point please give this video a thumbs up so I know you guys enjoy tutorials like these and if you haven't subscribed and joined the Kdivas fam already please click subscribe like there let's let's wait for people who haven't subscribed. Have, have, have you done it? Have you? Let's try and grow this community to 500k so we're able to grow this community bigger and better for the new year ahead. With that being said, let's get into this tutorial. Please check the description down below for the chapters if you would want to go to a specific section and if you want to find out more about the materials and the patterns that are used in this video. I have taken note of the following measurements to create the pattern for this trouser design. However, I'm going to be working from my basic trouser pattern because that saves me some time. I have them listed on the screen so make sure to work with yours for the best outcome. My fabric of choice is this yellow and black anchor print that I had some leftover from my corset top. I just thought I should make a matching set with it. I also grab a short invisible zip to put on the side of the trouser and I'm going to crack on with making the sewing patterns. As I mentioned earlier and I'm going to be working with my basic trouser pattern. This is a UK size 6 to 20 graded pattern front and back. You can trace off whatever size that you are or make your own pattern if you want to. I'm going to leave links to the PDF trouser pattern down below as well as the trouser pattern tutorial if you'd like to make your own custom pattern. I have gone in to trace off my size in the pattern and made some changes. The first change is I made the legs straight and wide because I wanted to have a more palazzo fit. Along the hemline, I added about 2 inches on the inner leg and about half an inch on the outer leg and essentially just connected that back to the crouch seam. So you can decide to go for a similar shape or have yours tapered like the original pattern or have it even more fitted if you would like. Just double check your measurements with your pattern before you commit to anything. For the front, I made two copies because the trouser pattern on the front is an asymmetric design which means one side is a normal leg and the other side is where you make your pleat detail. Decide if you want that on the left or on the right hand side and write fashion side up on the right side of the pattern because this can become confusing when it's time to actually cut the pattern onto fabric so once you just have that noted on the side that you want to keep as the right side of your fabric that guides you now i've decided on this side which is the right pattern here and i'm going to be drawing a diagonal line that goes from the waist to the hemline this is the direction or where my pleat is going to fold if you want your pleat to go more outside you sh shift your diagonal line to go more out of the leg or if you want it to go more inside basically you can just decide whatever direction you want your pleats to go so mine goes from the waist after my dart and then to the hem along that diagonal line i'm going to be slashing all the way to the hemline and leave just a little bit at the hem to keep the pattern still connected i've cut myself some fresh pattern paper and i'm going to be spreading this by about 12 inches just know that you more you spread it the wider the pleat is going to be along the waistline and the more volume you're going to be adding to your trouser around that thigh where your detail is once I had that spread to my desired width, I'm just going in here to tape the patterns down on the side on the paper that I've layered underneath. That way I can incorporate the volume in the design. Once it's all taped down, I'm going to be folding that extra piece of paper that we just added and I'm going to be folding it in half towards the crouch curve of this front piece. And you want to fold it in such a way that both edges of your original pattern before you slashed actually meet and connect. 
fold it nice and neat add some weight put some tape down and then extend the waistline outwards like this the aim is you want to cut along the original waistline of the trouser because you want to be able to fold the piece back into the waistband Now this is what the front pattern is looking like. I'm just going in here to cut off any excess paper I don't need and save this for a future project in, in another video. Now I'm going to the hemline and I'm going to just be shaping the hem of this pattern like so. So it's a nice and straight hem for this bottom of this particular side of the trouser. Don't forget to add your grain line, your annotations, notches, anything that would make cutting this pattern onto fabric a lot easier because that way when you're sewing your piece together the information is there for you to work with this is such a really cool design it has a japanese influence correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section down below but i found it and i knew i wanted to try it out now for the back we're going to be making similar changes like we did for the front essentially you want to keep the shape of the side seams the same on the bottom area of your back so the outer and inner seam you want it to be the same shape so everything can connect together but then that back crouch i extended to ensure for a more relaxed and comfortable fit i made sure the width of the hemline was the same as the front as well basically just layer your patterns over each other so you're sure everything matches aside the areas for you know the hip and the dart along the waistline that is different now the waistband here is essentially my waist measurement and it's about five inches wide this i'm just going to cut out one piece fuse it with some interfacing to give it some stability and structure these are all of the patterns i ended up creating i have the main feature piece for the front right leg which is at the bottom of the screen and then i have another front pattern and then the back pattern as well as my waistband if you haven't given this video a thumbs up at this point feel free to do so subscribe as well if you haven't already using the patterns i just made i'm going to go ahead to cut out the different parts of my trouser i'm essentially just cutting one piece for the front so i'm going to use this pattern to cut one piece for the right leg and then use the other front pattern to cut just one piece for the other side because one leg is a normal front and the other leg has a pleat detail whereas for the back i'm going to cut a pair one for the left and one for the right and then i'm going to cut just one piece of the waistbands these are all of the pieces i need for the trouser i have the main feature piece here and then i have a pair of the back and one piece of the other front leg as well as a waistband band which i have fused with some iron on interfacing essentially what that just means is i have iron interfacing that has glue that dissolves under heat on the wrong side of the fabric that way it gives the fabric a little bit of body and structure starting off with sewing i'm going to be sewing away the dots this i have pinned away off camera for both sides and i've pinned it on the wrong side of the fabric i've pinned it on the left and on the right front trouser legs and i'm going to be taking this to my machine to just stitch up the dot and have that out of the way once that is all done i'm going to lay down both front pieces and actually just pleat in the volume that we added earlier on in the pattern now if you've notched those points along the waistline this folding step should not be as hard my fold went over the front crouch line a little bit because i wanted to create that like wrap around effect when i have everything stitched together this you can press at this point if you want to I essentially just folded mine out of the way so it's easy to join my front and back trouser leg once i have that on. now i'm going to the back pattern i'm going to be still stitching up the darts on the waist on the back of both the left and the right hand side this i'm going to be stitching in a similar manner as i did for the front remembering to do a back stitch at the beginning and at the end of my seam to secure everything once that is all done i'm going to be joining the front and back pieces together with right sides facing each other so i'm going to be sewing up the outer and the inner leg leaving the crotch seam open you do want to leave one side either the left or the right hand side for your side zip so you have that open and available 
I've stitched it, overlocked it, and this is what the trouser is looking like at this point, which means it's ready to join the crouch seam together. This I'm going to be putting it in such a way that I put right sides facing each other and I'm joining the front crouch, the middle point, and then the back crouch together. I'm just going to sew it with one continuous stitch because I'm not putting my zip on my center front or on my center back my zip is going to sit on the side so i'm going to take this piece to my machine and i'm going to be sewing it on a one centimeter seam allowance normal straight stitch and then overlock or finish that seam afterwards After stitching all of that, I gave my piece a press to relax all of the stitching and this is what it looks like. Because of the print, you can't really see how gorgeous this detail is but once it's on, you would understand the magic that is happening here. So after I was done stitching everything, I'm going to go ahead to add my waistband and I have already ironed my waistband in such a way that there's a fold on the top edge and I'm going to be joining the raw edge along the waistline of my trouser. I have notches in place to guide me and I'm just going to pin the waistband along the waistline of the pants first and then I'm going to take this to my machine and sew the waistband to the waistline of the trouser on a one cent centimeter seam allowance because that's how much I had in my sewing pattern. After doing a normal straight stitch, I went back in to actually use bias tape to finish the seam. If you do not have bias tape, you can use an overlocker, a zigzag stitch, or you can fold in the waistband to conceal the waistline of your trouser and do a top stitch. That's another way that you could finish off this particular detail on the trouser. That way you have a nice, beautiful and clean finish along the waistline of the trouser. After I was done doing this, I gave my piece a nice press yet again and this is what it's looking like. Everything is just coming together so beautifully, so nicely and I'm actually glad I went with the palazzo cut because palazzo cuts are my preferred cut if I want like a comfy and you know just like I don't want anything touching my leg type of feeling. Once I was on stitching all of that and giving my piece another good press, this is how the pleat is actually folded over on the front. When it gets to the bottom, it kind of disappears into nothing. So it goes from a very wide pleat to a non-existent pleat along the hemline. I'm going to go in next to add the zip on the side, on that open side that I left earlier on. I'm going to be stitching in a short black invisible zip. I believe this was 23 centimeters if I remember correctly and I like to paint my invisible zips open because that way I'm able to really go in and unroll the zip and stitch really closely to the end so once the zip is done up it kind of blends in with the rest of the seam on that side. After stitching one side of the zip tape, I went back in to stitch the other side and then I'm just going to go to the bottom of the zip where there might be a little bit of an opening just to conceal and finish that up to complete the trouser. Now this is what it looks like on. It is such a cool, like I feel so cool wearing this trouser. That's the only way I can describe it. It's cool, it's comfortable. You could also add side pockets if you wanted to, like an inseam pocket or a patch pocket, if that's something that you were interested in. But because it's a very like vibrant yellow and black, I just paired it with a black shirt. This would also be great with a crop top or a like crop corset situation on the top half of the body so all the focus is on the trouser but i hope you guys enjoyed this project i always like playing around with slash and spread methods and creative pattern making because i think that's where the beauty of pattern making is the fact that you can add different styles shapes volume on a simple pair of trousers shirt jackets so on and so forth if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up share it with your sewing community if you think someone else would enjoy it subscribe and join the k Divas fam if you haven't already and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye